My name's Greg Hill. I'm a professional adventurer. I lived in Revelstoke for 20 years, and I moved here for the mountains and the snow because it was untapped. It was like this incredible snow with mountains as far as you can see that a lot of the stuff had never been skied or, or played in. And I was like, wow, this is it. And the Shangri-La of backcountry skiing. So yeah, I moved here then, and you know, it's, it's been incredible ever since. Then I just started playing in the mountains and ski touring, and soon enough, I just kind of got sucked into the whole adventure side, and I've just never stopped because there's so much that I get back from the mountains. In my mind, what makes the mountain ranges around Revelstoke special is one, we've got giant old growth forests that you can just ski through. The gladed trees are incredible. You've just got to get really, really fit to really enjoy it because it's, it's just endless. started doing these personal challenges to prove that I was doing something so that's where I started doing as much vertical in a day as I could or much vertical in a year and th those kind of challenges propelled me for years. The big thing is the two million feet in 2010 and that was kind of like the biggest goal I, of, of my life. For years my, my challenges were all physical. Now I'm, I'm past my peak as an athlete. I'm 43. I mean now my adventures are evolving. I'm, I'm at a new phase of my life where I'm looking to kind of do good with my actions I guess and kind of give back a bit more to others and not just selfishly go push myself in the mountains. I, I recognized that I was an influencer and that I was leading the way in teaching people to push their limits in the mountains and explore and and I was looking at it and I was like, well, okay, I've got this soapbox to stand on. Like, what could I do that would influence people in a positive direction? And, and I realized that we're the nature lovers. We're the ones that should be the first to change to protect what we love. So, so I, I consciously decided, I was like, okay, it's time for me to use my voice for good and to speak up on this because we are the ones that should start and be the stewards for mother nature. So it was definitely a conscious decision. I was like, okay, let's use my voice and let's influence good. One of my jobs with the companies that I'm sponsored with, which a lot of the gear is fossil fuel based or the packaging or everything, is to push them as hard as I can. And I go to meetings now and I'm definitely pushing and they're, they're responding. Like there's entire meetings just on sustainability and new products and how to make them all better. And the tipping point's come for sure. And there's a lot of companies that are working hard to change because they know they need to. I knew that there was this disconnect where I was loving and appreciating nature, but then I was accessing it in a negative way. So I was like, wow, electric cars, cool. I could actually access all these trips without burning fossil fuels. The idea to me was I live in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere. And if I could live my life and prove that you can travel far to Vancouver, down to the Colorado, if I could prove all that, then it, it would show that anybody anywhere can kind of adopt to these electrical cars. Because if it works here for me, it can work for anybody. It was a tipping point then. So ever since then, I've been like changing my lifestyle, a weekday vegetarian, just trying to figure out how to offset my energy uses or my flights or you know all these things. So it's it's just kind of culminated since then. It just keeps picking up because you keep on thinking, oh, what else can I do? You know. A great day in the mountains would be to grab my little e car, pick up a friend, go skin around the forests, talking about how we can improve the world and and get some great skiing. amazingly inspiring group of people who are standing behind Cow Canada. Specifically in Revelstoke, we have started a regional chapter here, so we have a really excited group of volunteers that are spreading the word and helping grow our membership. We've seen the kind of motivation and excitement and concern that the younger generation have with this issue. The POW demographic, we definitely speak to a more millennial and kind of younger audience. And we've noticed that just through, um, yeah, the people that come to our events, even the donations that we get. You know, we don't get massive checks written to us. We get, you know, $50, $75. And it just shows that people may not have a lot and they're kind of in the earlier stages of their career, but they care. And so they're doing everything they can. And tons of volunteer hours are being put in. So it, yeah, it's been really neat in that sense. 
I mean, with Protect Our Winters in Revelstoke, I'd love it if we just got to a point where the movement was so strong that when anybody was coming to Revelstoke as a tourist, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to that town that cares and is trying to do stuff. So we need to change here to help influence globally, I guess. And it's tough. I mean, it's a, it's a big battle. We're all addicted to fossil fuels and conveniences, and we definitely have to change a lot. We've got a concerned community. We've got a lot of different stakeholders, even the heli ski industry, they all want to do something. It's definitely, we recognize that it's the time to act. And this town is definitely, everybody we talk to is really interested in, and the momentum is building. I look back on my career and I'm just so grateful for all of the experiences I've had that have given me an appreciation for the outdoors and a love for nature and appreciation for different cultures and seen some really cool things around the world. And having my son definitely awakened me to the impact that my experiences have had on the environment. So it's motivated me a lot to get involved with this organization. And I just hope that he can experience the mountains um, and nature and pow days just like I was able to as a child and through my adult life. Both Izzy and I, because we're, at, we're parents, as you, be, you do, you look at your own legacy and what you've been doing and you recognize the things you've been doing wrong and that you want to do better for them. And I, I definitely, they've been the impetus for me to change and for you to change. And it really is, you recognize your responsibility to them and that's so important, you know, we do. We want them to have powders. Mm -hmm. We want them to enjoy the world that we have and we've got to stand up and protect it. Mm -hmm.